thank you for your time. I'm, I'm glad I can Absolutely. hopefully hear. Yeah, again, great. Uh, so I will go straight to that just because of the time pressure. Uh, but I work on speaking Ria Novosti. And uh, so I was just curious, um, what experiment are you looking forward to the most or which one is music for you? <laughs> uh, there, I mean, there's so many experiments. It's a flying, uh, it's a flying laboratory. Um, I, when I think about it, I think about myself, I'm really a mechanic. I fix the space station and then I'm also a laboratory technician. And then uh, in some sense, I'm also a laboratory rat. They did the experiments on me. And so I, <laughs> I think the uh, kind it's of like, like the... the <laughs> again? Three people in one person. Yeah. And so uh, I think it's kind of like the TV show Pinky and the Brain where there were some of the lab rats up there. But the, I think some of the most interesting experiments are the ones that we do on ourselves where we are the experiment, right? We're putting more humans in space and we're increasing the statistical knowledge of what we can so we can move further into the solar system. Um, I, one of the things I think is interesting is there's an experiment where normally you, you have to work out on space station with, you know, resistive exercise and traditionally a treadmill in, the, in a bicycle, but a treadmill takes up so much space and so much mass. And then as you move forward to the moon or to Mars and you've got these long transits, having to push that mass of a treadmill with a rocket has penalties over time. So uh, we're looking at an experiment. I'm going to go six months without using a treadmill so that I'm not going to walk for six months and I'm going to come back never having used a treadmill. And we're going to try and supplement my exercise with the um, resistive exercise and then the bicycle only. Yeah, I, I guess this physical change of the body is tricky, right, in the space. On yeah. that note, like Elon Musk uh, wants to uh, settle on Mars. <laughs> you know, it mm -hmm. takes a long time to get there, right? How realistic is this for the human body? And would you like to join? <laughs> it's it's super, it'll be super difficult. And I think what is very difficult for people to understand is a sense of scale, right? Uh, when you hear people talk about budgets for governments, uh, they're like, oh, the government spent a billion dollars on this. But but on a sense of scale, a billion dollars on most governments scale is is probably, you know, I'm just shooting from the hip. Uh, less than the cost of a cell phone payment on when you shrink somebody's income, when you shrink it down to a scale of somebody's individual income. And so a sense of scale is really hard to understand for humans, myself included. Um, but if you look at it, uh, if you were to shrink the Earth to like something this big, right, the International Space Station is, you know, a couple of finger nails width above that. It's not that far away. And and the moon, you can't even see on the screen, but the moon is on this fingertip and I stress this hand all the way out and and Earth is here. And Mars is, you know, a, a couple kilometers away. So people understanding that and then the fact that the Earth and the moon both orbit the sun. And so there are times when if the center, of, we'll call my nose the sun, <laughs> right? Like sometimes Earth is over here and Mars is over here and they're kind of racing. And at some point they're conjoined and then at some point they separate again. And so this distance is like a hundred, I don't know, it's hundreds of mi millions of miles and it makes it really difficult. So yes, the answer is yes. Yes. Uh, SpaceX is getting ready to go to Mars and they're building the architecture to do that, but it's really, really, really far. And it's, you know, the distance from the earth to the space station uh, is, I don't know, uh, 250 miles to the moon is 250,000 miles and to the Mars is like 250, it's, it's a thousand times further each time. Do you want a dollar or do you want a million dollars? It's kind of the big difference. <laughs> so now this, uh, we move to one centimeter closer to the moon. How do you think the Luna or the Artemis uh, program set for 2025 and 2026? How is it looking and like to go there? <laughs> uh, it would be great. I think that's a, it's a great stepping stone. Um, it's a tremendous stepping stone. Think about, I like to think about analogy of Antarctica. When the humans first went to Antarctica, I think my history is rough, call it 1920s. It was a race. Does this sound familiar? Race to the south to Antarctica. It was like two different competing entities from two different countries racing to Antarctica, right? This sounds familiar. And they were going there just to touch it and come back to say that they were the first, right? And lots of people died and they built expeditions that were tuned just to touch it and come back. It wasn't until 50 years later that an international coalition got together and built the Mudson Scott South Pole Station at the South Pole of the Earth. It was 1957 when they did it. It took it 50 years to come up with the technology to go to the South Pole of the Earth to stay. 
And uh, you can see the, the analogies here, right? Now we have an international coalition going to stay on the moon. Yeah. Instead of just boop and come back. In the 1970s, right? No one knows why he ha we have this 50 years gap. And I guess if you may just quickly, last question, um, because of the time pressure, how do you um, appreciate the cooperation between NASA and North Cosmos and how are you enjoying it? I love it. We have we have a multiple decade relationship with an incredible group of people. The Russian people, I, I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed my time in Moscow with, with the instructors over there that were passionate about what they were teaching. They were good at what they were teaching. Um, I mean, I... I really enjoyed my time working with a group of professionals and we have 30, 40, I mean, talk to, I don't know if you're talking to Michael Barrett, his relationship going back goes a long time. Uh, Sasha uh, is my crewmate and I've had an absolute blast working with him. He's an absolute professional. He's tough as nails and he's super sharp. So I, I love it. Absolutely love it. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, we go together. Oh, nice. Good. Great. All right. Thank you so much. You, so sorry. That's all the time we have for